Good morning. We're going to have our song service. Please stand with us as we sing. We're going to start with our theme song, A Day of Rest and Gladness. <laughs> Maybe they're sick or might not feel well. 
or um, need to have care. But um, we need to remember them because when you're sick, you just need your brother and sister's prayers. The Lord is good. So please remember them uh, if you have an opportunity. And well, we have the virus right now, but after that, we'll try to visit or call at least, okay? Um, the offering this week will be for the Texaco Conference Ministries. And the children's offering will be for evangelism. Now, of course, right now, we just have the offering plate in the back there. So when the offering time comes, one can put it in or when you come in. If you have a prayer request, uh, we have prayer, prayer slips up front. Uh, you can write down your prayer request and either put it in the basket or put it in the plate. Um, I'm so look forward to the time when we don't have to do this, whether we can write our requests down, put them in the basket up here, and come up and pray together, or else pray in the pews. Thank God our pastor, no matter what, rain or shine, he's the one that uh, they come up, come up to, and he prays over them, even though he's not here with us sometimes. So we have prayer over them, and we're well prayed over. The Lord wants us to pray. Vespers today will be at 7 p.m. And uh, that's about as late as we're going to get, you think? Is that right? Yeah. Because if you get any later, well, it's already dark, etc. So I think we're going to stay close on 7 p.m. here. Um, as I mentioned before, the prayer slips, they're right there in front of you on the pew. Uh, sometimes there's a pen or a pencil there to write out your request if you'd like to write it. And um, we also have our prayer meeting at 7 p.m. on Tuesday night. Uh, usually we have questions and we talk about this sermon in detail. So if there's any questions or any discussion or something of that nature, we, we have at that time. We are sponsoring three children uh, overseas for boarding school. Child Impact International is who we're going through. Uh, many of us, or some of us at least, have uh, our own that we're supporting too. So there's no limit on how many. But I guess the only limit is financial, and the Lord provides. Amen? Amen. So we have three. We have uh, two girls and a boy. Uh, our first adoptee was Happy. Her name is Happy. Happy Tupura. And you'll see her um, pictures and her letters, and they're very good about keeping in touch, so you can't help but have that connection. Our pastor, his uh, address is here in the bulletin. And sunset today is at 8.09 p.m. Next Friday, it will be at 8.09 p.m. Would you please stand with me as we our hardest service before it's done. Good we go on with the difficult standard. Would you all rejoice with me that yesterday I turned 83? Oh, I did! Oh, I never thought I'd live this long. <laughs> what you got out of the bar? I would say that yesterday morning I had a dream. I don't know who gave me that dream, Satan or Christ, but it got me out of bed with a seat and I've been laughing all day. And then last night I was looking through the my pictures are swimming together. And I barely heard the phone ring. And when I took the phone, it was my daughter. She said, three times you're trying to call me. And to wish you happy birthday, and I didn't hear. But the Lord was so, the Lord is so good. He knows mm -hmm. just what we need. Because she told me my second grandchild wanted to call, wanted to call me and wish me happy birthday. Oh. And I wasn't answering the phone no more. But just as I put down the phone, the next stack of pictures I pick up, there this one that wanted to call me, there was a beautiful picture mm -hmm. right there. And I had looked, I don't remember seeing that picture before. I simply put it on my, on my bed, thinking mm -hmm. last night. Mm -hmm. So the Lord is so good to us, but yes. I never thought I would live this long. Praise the Lord, 83, isn't that wonderful? Amen. 
and go on strong witnessing for the Lord. Yeah, she's one of our best little literature um, distributors to God be the Lord. I guess we could call you a literature evangelist. Amen. Amen. I took all those things I was listening this morning. Oh, my God, so you would. I took all this medical training in Ohio, mm -hmm. and somehow I have been able to do nothing. Massage, everything, and yet I have not been able to do anything. But all I can do is give out trouble. Well, you never know. You may be pulled out of uh, mothballs and which work. <laughs> <laughs> because the Lord is coming and we've got a work to do. I got I got to move on, okay? We'll talk a little later on. We'll give you a microphone and you can testify, okay? Okay. All right. Would you please prepare your hearts for the worship service? Thank you. <laughs>
Today's scripture is from the book of Acts. Can you really hear me well? Yes. 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 My mouth just gets a lot full. Acts 8, 34-38. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began with the same scripture and preached unto Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him.
uh, that beautiful music to us. It's like you just draw your heart right up to the throne, to the throne of God. Praise God in the presence of God. To God be glory. Would you sing with me the doxology? Will you stand and sing? <laughs>
been in this church. Oh, since when were you here last, David? When we were meeting with our new pastors. That was last <laughs> September, no, June. It's been a while. A good year. Good year. And it's really good to be here. Um, I love preaching. I love sharing the word of the Lord. Amen. And I love watching people who have received something. I've heard something for the very first time. And I need to tell you, in keeping with your 28 fundamental beliefs of the Sunday Adventist Church, this topic is on baptism. But before I continue any further, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. And as I present the message on baptism, I beseech you to have the Holy Spirit dwell in each and every one of us, that he may talk to us and reason with us and help, and help us understand further the truth on baptism. And I need your words from on high that I may say the words that you know someone here needs to hear. Amen. You know our needs, you know our, 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 our desires and our thoughts, and let these be filled today through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we ask you and thank you for all things. Amen. 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 Baptism. Back, I looked it up in a concordance. Baptism, the word itself, is mentioned 22 times. Baptisms is mentioned one time in the Bible. Baptized, nine times. Baptized, 61 times. Baptized, ist, one time. Baptized, if, two times. Baptizing, four times. A total of 100 times in the New Testament only. Baptism is not mentioned in the Old Testament, but that's okay. The New Testament came alive with the power of the Holy Spirit. The English word baptize comes from the Greek word baptizo, which implies immersion, since it is derived from the word bapto, meaning to dip or go under. And here we go in Acts where Hannah read our scripture reading, and it reads, so the eunuch, but what happened was, let's, let's do a little layout here. P, um, Philip was told by an angel to go down this path, to go down this road. And so <coughs> Philip walked that path, and then the Holy Spirit said, get next to that chariot, and hear what this man is saying. And so Philip walks, and he said to the you and, and the, then Philip said, do you understand what you're reading? And the eunuch said, of whom does this prophet say this? Of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at this scripture, preached Jesus to him. And he was touching upon Isaiah 53. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, see, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he, and he was baptized. People today do not take baptism seriously. They think by being baptized, they're automatically saved. They can still go living their life to the fullest, do what they want, say what they want, and still be saved. This is not baptism. By baptism, we confess our faith in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and testify of our death to sin and to our purpose to walk in newness of life. Thus, we acknowledge Christ as Lord and Savior, become His people, and are received as members by his church. Amen. Baptism is a symbol of our union with Christ, the forgiveness of sins, and our reception of the Holy Spirit. It is by immersion in water and, it can, and is contingent on affirmation of faith in Jesus and evidence of repentance of sin. It follows instruction 
in the Holy Scriptures and acceptance of their teachings. Baptism, a symbol of our union with our Lord, our union with our Lord and Savior. Baptism tells us that we become one with Christ. Baptism tells us that we will walk with the Lord and be with the Lord. <clears throat> now, there is a point in one's life that a decision needs and must be made, and that is baptism. A desire to repent and accept Christ as your Savior. But at first, but first, it is necessary in stepping down to self. Many people seem to be too proud. They don't want to admit that they're sinners. Their attitude is, well, Christ died for me. And, and end of story. Christ died for me. I'm saved through Christ because he died for me. They don't do anything else. But baptism, you have to make that step in stepping down to self. In Matthew 3, verses 13 through 15, we read that Jesus came from Galilee to John in the Jordan to be baptized by him. Now, who was John to Jesus? His cousin, John, was six months older than Jesus. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you are coming to me. Because John has been saying for six months or so that someone greater than I am is coming. And so here's Jesus saying, you need to baptize me. But Jesus, oh, oh, oh. But Jesus answered and said to him, Permitted to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. Amen. You know, you can see that his head is going down into the water. Amen. And that's, that's paramount. Very paramount. In Matthew 3, 16 and 17, we read, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, and whom I am well pleased. Amen. You know, last quarter it was on Daniel and Revelation. I loved it. I loved that cover of Daniel, of the, of the quarterly. I loved it. And it said that an angel came to Daniel after he prayed for 21 days. And the an angel told Daniel, Daniel, most beloved of God. And that hit me. I thought many times the Lord says, you know, you're beloved of God. But never most beloved of God. And what does it take for God to, to, to tell us you're most beloved of me. You know, you can't, you know, and here's Jesus. He's baptized. An innocent man was baptized as an example for us and for his father who said in heaven, my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Is our life, is our daily life considered well pleased to, to God, to those in heaven? At his baptism, Jesus received a special outpouring of the Holy Spirit. His experience reveals that, that water baptism and spirit baptism belong together, that a baptism void of the reception of the Holy Spirit is incomplete. We cannot be without the Holy Spirit. When we are baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we are dedicated consecrated and united with the three great powers of heaven and to and to the spreading of the everlasting gospel what can we do with the three great powers of heaven in doing the lord's work the lord didn't give it to his angels to do it he gave it to us we are commissioned to spread the gospel it is our job and when the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into all truth. And what really irks me is people say, I don't read the Bible because it's full of lies. And it's another, it's another way of saying they just don't want to read it. They're just trying to find an excuse. 
And I, I, I don't know how many people have told me, well, if I read the Bible, I'm going to have to change my lifestyle, and I don't want to do that right now. <laughs> and I went to visit a lady some years ago, and she had this big, beautiful family Bible on her, on her coffee table, or whatever you call it, in the living room. And I was looking at it, just admiring the cover, just so beautiful. So I leaned forward. I was going to open the, the book and the cover. So, oh, 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 don't touch it. I said, oh, okay, I'm sorry. She says, this Bible has been in the family for like three, four generations, and nobody has opened it. Oh. <laughs> and I thought, well, do you, and I said, well, do you have other Bibles in the house? No, no, just that one. <laughs> And I says, why don't you read it? But we don't need to. But the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, leads us to all truth. But how do we know the truth if we don't read the word? And, and the thing is, when people say, well, you can't depend on the Bible because it was written by man. I says, yeah, but it also says it is written by holy men of God that were moved by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit didn't, didn't choose a drug addict. He didn't choose an alcoholic. He chose a man that was dedicated in the work of the Lord, who loved the Lord and his work, who loved people, who loved, who loved giving people um, words from on high. And yet we read in, in Malachi, I am your Lord God, I change not. We read in Hebrews, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen. We may change, but he does not. And here we are, when we have the Holy Spirit in us, what do we have? The fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, half of those I do well. Let me hang on, hang on. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six I do well. <laughs> I blended on my French roots. I, <laughs> that's, a, that, that's the best I came up with. No, I am not a very patient person. My honey can test right that. I am patient to a point. And I'm not a very gentle person who has to test right that. I've been a tomboy and I've been kind of like, I'm a, I'm a like buff, you know, for a woman. And so, but truthfully, the fruits of the spirit, there's nothing harmful in it. If you don't have love, then you have hate. Amen. What is hate of? Hate is not of God, it's of the devil. If you don't have joy, then you have misery. I have a sister, oh God help me. I know I need to call her and check up on her. God help me, she's full of misery. <laughs> 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 and, and I try to sit through the conversation, okay, uh-huh, okay. So I'm sorry to hear that, uh-huh, okay. And when I try to mention how the Lord can help her in her life, don't go there. And I'm, I am, I, I'm, I'm French, and people are basically Roman Catholics. And I'm from a, and I'm from a solid Roman Catholic family. No one has left the Roman Catholic faith, and I was the first one. And I, my mother's brother is a priest, and her sister is a nun. And my uncle Albert, the priest, he's retired now because he's in his early 80s. Um, they pray for me all the time to come back to the church, and I told them I'm happy. But yet, there is no joy, there is no love in control. If you, don't, if you don't do this, God's going to strike you dead. Or you'll burn in hell forever. Now what kind of God burns people in hell forever? A God of love does not do that. A God of mercy does not do that. If you do not have peace, then you're always warring against someone. You're always fighting with someone. There's people I work with, they just like to pick and pick and just start a fight. You know, misery loves company. I'm, I'm, I'm not in that company. I, I don't care for it. Patience. People nowadays just don't have patience. Um, one thing that I really hate about this COVID-19 is this, there's been some advertisements on TV that's, that say, 
that reads, um, if you know the child, if your child's been beaten or screaming for help, call, call 911. Don't let it go. People tend not to have much patience when things go wrong in the, in the life, in the home life. They, they take it out on, on the children. And that, that grieves me to know him. Kindness. Very little kindness nowadays. I get that. People are always constantly, you know, we live in a world where it's very, people are very narcissistic. It's all about me, what I want. And they don't show kindness. If you can't do, I, I had some people approach me one time, not, not at the same time. If you want me to be your friend, you'd have to buy things for me. I says, you know, I have enough friends that I don't need you. You know, I said, this, this is how, not how you make a friend. But that, that's, that, that's how they think of it. You buy me gifts, now I'll, I'll be your friend. Yeah. Hey, I must as well buy you a car, buy you a new house, and I still won't be your friend, because they're, 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 they're users. Goodness. Is, is there anything good on earth anymore? Faithfulness. Are we faithful to our Lord and Savior? Are we faithful to our spouses? Are we faithful in all that we do? Gentleness and self-control. These are all the makings of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, that when you are spirit-filled, you bear these fruits, these characteristics. And I love it. I love it. Going on. For John, truly, that this is Jesus talking to his disciples right before he ascended to heaven for the final time. And he says, For John truly baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. It was just a few days later that they received the, the Holy Spirit. And then it, he goes on to tell them, But you shall receive power after, the, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and, all, and unto the outer, outermost parts of the earth. You will do this. You will be my witnesses in all these areas. In Matthew 28, 19 and 20, we read, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Did you know his last time on earth, he spent 40 days with his disciples? 40 days. He taught them a lot. He told them a lot. And that Holy Spirit, days later, came upon them and everything that Jesus told them was, boom, embedded in their brains so they could share it to others. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. And they were told to, to teach and observe all things I have commanded you. He didn't tell you to, to lie and make up stories that I said. Teach them the truth. Teach them what I said to you, what I told you, what I taught you. And then he says, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. We are at the end of the age, people. And when I, when I, there's a story behind this. This little boy, the miss, some missionaries, I believe, did, I heard this story years ago. And the missionaries were in, I believe in China. And they had this little boy, probably about eight, nine years old. He would come every day to hear stories about Jesus. How Jesus loved the children. How he cared for the children. How Jesus was powerful. He healed the sick, raised the dead, and, 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 and did all sorts of powerful miracles. And this little boy was so thrilled to hear, because he never heard such a God that was so powerful. And then, the missionary reads this, and he says, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always. And the boy springs up to his feet. He says, my name is Lo. He's talking to me. Jesus is talking to me. He's going to be with me always. And lo, that, those words, that hit the little boy because he thought they were talking about him. And this, this just very fact,
that this little boy can sit at the Lord talking to him permissibly at eight or nine years old changed his life. Amen. He Amen. didn't have any old. He had no family. He went begging the streets for food. But now, he had Jesus. Amen. And he knew. And he knew that Jesus would take care of him. Then Peter said unto them, here there was a group, of, a crowd of people listening to the disciples. And some were saying, well, Matt, what makes you think you're being truthful to us? And they were kind of getting back to the disciples. And, and so Peter stands up, you know, bold and brave. Peter, who denied his Lord three times, you know, denied knowing the Lord, stands up and he says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For the, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But if you a verse prior to that, it reads, and this one man in the crowd says, what you have said pricked us in the heart, in our hearts. It pricked us. In other words, they felt guilty. Their hearts were troubled. If this thing they're saying about this Jesus Christ is true, what are we doing? What should we believe? And, and all of a sudden they felt guilty and, they, and their hearts were crushed because they have believed lies all their life. And I know it's like to believe lies, not knowing that they were lies. Every week at church, we would hear Father Jumanea say, you don't need to read your Bibles. After all, we read it for you. We're not going to lie to you. Well, when I started reading the Bible, I thought, oh, they lied about that, they lied about that. But that's not what he said. That was pretty, that, that hurt me. Because we consider them men of God doing the Lord's work. They shouldn't be lying to us like this. But they did. Peter tells them to repent for the missions of sin, of their sins. Baptism is an inner cleansing, the washing away of sins that have been confessed. I remember when I was baptized, I came out, not because I was in water, I felt I came out clean. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I, I, I took a, a bath the day, the, that night, you know, when we put my baptism the next day, I took a bath, you know. But that was not the clean, I, I just, I could not explain the clean. I just feel, I felt like, like, like a, a new child in Christ. And I felt that my past life, my, my life of, of, of misery that I lived, my mom's an alcoholic and she was very abusive and my first husband was very abusive. And I felt that all that was gone. And I began a new life. And I, I loved it, I loved it. And that was 46 and a half years ago. Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? What does that mean? What does that mean? Do you not know another translation? Don't you know that those of us who were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ have joined him in his death and have openly said that our old sinful lives have died with him? You know, people may not forgive you, but Christ does. And the beauty about Jesus Christ is he remembers your sins no more. They're gone. Wipe from his memory. Now people may say, well, I remember when you did this. I said, I, my sister, I went uh, last year, my husband and I, I'm, I'm from Maine, and we flew to Maine, and I, I spent two weeks there. I went to my 50th class reunion, and uh, I, I enjoyed it immensely. I hadn't seen these kids in 50 years, but they're not kids anymore. They're, they're older than me, but anyway, they're not kids anymore. And my sister tried to bring up my past. And I says, I did not come here to go down memory lane. Move on. 
you know, but that's okay. No, I, don't get me wrong, I was not an evil person. I did not drink, I did not smoke, I did not do drug, drugs. I, I was a good kid. I just chose the, the wrong husband, and she was, she was gonna, she wanted to throw it at my face. And I just cut it short, just cut it quick. But the thing is, when we are baptized in Christ, our dead selves, our dead our sins, are dead with Christ. And, the, and another thing too, we need to remember, that if you, if you walk away from Christ and do your thing, baptism is not going to save you. Christ cannot save you if you end up rejecting him. You've got to stay firm. You've got to stay rooted in the word and cling on to Christ. Then we read, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that, like as Jesus was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Another translation. Therefore, if by our baptism we were buried with him, then, just as Christ was raised from the dead to the glory of God, we also were raised to live a new life to the glory of God. Amen. We are not sinners. What does, you know, what does Jesus say? All through... I don't understand it. All through the Bible, we are told, if you do not repent, you're lost. Christ came to save us from our sins, not in them. We have to do away with our sinful life. We cannot continue to sin and still expect to make it to heaven. We, when we come to church, what did, we, what did we learn in church? What, what, what? We go home. My husband and I, we live in Hereford. It's 60 miles from here. <coughs> and we attend church in Plainview, which is 65 miles south of Hereford. On the way to church, we talk about who's going to be there. I'll go over the court, I'll, I'll go over the Sabbath school lesson since I teach the adult class. I'll, I'll read it to him sometimes. And we discuss things. Then on the way back, we discuss that sermon was good. I like what he said. We talk about what we heard during the sermon hour. Go to church to learn. Go to church to learn about Jesus Christ. Amen. Go to church and help grow in Christ. And if you need help, call someone you know is faithful to the Lord Amen. and will help you. <clears throat> There's always someone the Holy Spirit will impress upon you. There was a lady She's not a member of the church. She she transferred to Plainview on a job. She was a um, Babazidi, a um, oh, a a nest of this. Thank you. That is. Thank you. She. I was greatly impressed one day to call her. It was one evening, it was like ten o'clock. I thought, oh, she's in bed by now. But I was and that, that, the impression came so strong. I called her, and she said. She says, wouldn't you know it? I thought, oh my lady, she's mad at me. She says, here I am asking the Lord, please have somebody call me, I need help. And it had to be you. Yes. And, I, and I said, is that a good thing? <laughs> she, said, she said, yes. So I'm so glad you called. And she starts telling me her problems. There's a certain situation that she did not know how to handle and what have you. And I got to know more about her personally. The promptings of the Holy Spirit. Heed it. Listen to it and carry it through. But we are buried with Christ in baptism. It's a whole new life. Amen. I cannot seem to emphasize that enough for some reason. God calls people to see that their lost condition, confess their sinfulness, submit themselves to God, repent of their sin, accept Christ's atonement, and consecrate themselves to a new life with Him. Without conversion, they cannot enter a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Only through repentance can they experience death to sin, a prerequisite to baptism. My mother had nine children. French have large families like the Hispanics and the Italians. You know, they have large families. And I think, I think having nine children, we're allowed to have three black sheep of the family. 
Well, I have a sister. I have three sisters. Three sisters were on black ships of the family. And um, one got baptized several years ago, did not join the church. Uh, I suppose a non denominational church, did not join the church, but she felt she had to be baptized. Well, she called to, no, I called her to see what was up. I think, I think my brother was telling me about it. So I called her to see how it all went. And uh, she says, now my sins are forgiven. I, I, I could live my life now. Uh, I says, what? <laughs> she says, I was baptized. My sins are forgiven. I said, well, did you accept Christ as your Savior? Oh, no, I didn't need to. I said, well, without Christ, there is no forgiveness of sin. But the water cleansed me from all our sins. No, 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 no. you got to repent first. <clears throat> Make your life clean. Be baptized. Accept Christ as your personal, well, accept Christ as your personal Savior. Be baptized. Because without Christ in your life, you're going to continue sinning. Without the Holy Spirit guiding you to all truth, you're going to continue sinning. She didn't believe me. Okay. Which is, which, I, I expected that from her. But the sad thing is, she's a lost soul. I pray, I have sent my family literature, Signs of the Time, um, help me here, Seth to Christ, Desire of Ages. And uh, my brother and his wife were baptized 10 years ago, David. He's about 10 years ago. And it thrilled me to no end. And my uncle, the priest, cursed me. Because it was my fault that they became Adventists. Uh -huh. So I'm, I'm cursed in, 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 in our family. Which is fine. I don't care. Now, you notice how it says God calls people to see their lost condition. When we are, when we walk in darkness, there's no truth in darkness. There's no light in darkness. Yeah. All you do is see a lot of misery and suffering, but yet people like to dwell in darkness. But the Lord calls out of darkness into his marvelous light. We need to live and dwell in that light. Because without the light, there's no truth. On a sadder note, on a sadder note, some have been buried alive in the water of baptism. Self did not die. Those did not receive, a, these did not receive a new life in Christ. Those who have joined the church in this way have brought with them the seeds of weakness and apostasy. Their unsanctified influence confuses those within and without the church and jeopardizes its witnesses. Its witness. I've been in the faith, like I said, it'll be, it'll be 47 years in December. I've seen many people come and go. I've seen many people do damage to newcomers. There's people in churches that work hard to bring people in, and there are people in the same church that work hard to kick them out. Why? Good versus evil. And what I don't understand is that we are the last day church. We are the remnant. And we need to be better people. We need to be closer to the Lord. Pray and beg for the Holy Spirit. But instead, there are some people who did not step down to self when they walked into that baptismal water. They left self still in self and go about causing problems. About, ask my hand, and most trying to work on sermons. And about a year ago, I guess, I was doing research. And there was a man, I did not get, I don't remember his name, who was a former Seventh day Adventist minister. He dogged everything about our faith. Dogged everything. And I thought, oh, you miserable man. Do you know what you're doing? You are a lost soul. When you dog a church that is God's remnant church, you also dog the Lord. How dare you? It hurt me to no end. He dogged everything about the church. And I thought, to, and I think I told David about it. I came to realization that here was a man who was uh, no longer a <coughs> pastor because he left. He went out by the wayside because he failed. 
because he did not want to do what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He left the faith, left the Lord, and now he's criticizing everything we say and do. And this man is a miserable man because this man is doing the work of Satan. And Satan loves it when God's true people are being destroyed with lies. He loves it. And so there's always plenty of people to do that. God help us. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. What does he say? You will find me when you search for me with all your heart. The Lord knows where we're at. He's waiting for us to go to him. And we need this faith. When you tell people, they say, well, I don't need faith in God, and they go on and on and on. I says, well, don't you need faith at all? You no, know, we don't need faith. I said, don't you have faith when you go out to your car, that you have faith your car's going to start? Well, yeah. I said, don't you have faith when you go to the store and you have money to pay for your groceries? Well, yeah. So why isn't having faith in God is any different? They think, these poor souls think that, that um, if God exists, fine. No big deal. Because they want to know nothing about God. They want nothing to do with God. Nothing whatsoever. And that's a sad thing. So then, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Another translation. So faith comes from listening to what God says, including his word about Jesus Christ. Faith comes from listening to what God says. What do we know what God says? Reading the Bible. That's it. And many times the Holy Spirit talks to us. And I'm so thankful that I am open to the Holy Spirit. So I don't know where I'd be without the Holy Spirit today. I love this one. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. We have faith to believe what he says he will do. He says, test me, try me. In my life, he says, prove me now. Challenge me, come on. Claim this promise, and I'll show you that I'm a, I'm a God of my word. So he wants us to test him all the time. If you doubt, if, you lack, if your faith is, is lacking, go to the Lord. Sit down, wherever you're at, sit down, get on your knees, uh, whatever is coming for you. And seek him. Lord, I'm searching for you. I need your help. And he's, the Lord is just a prayer away. He is faster than lightning. And it's amazing on how he will answer your, your prayers and he will hear you. He hears every sincere prayer. I met one man. He said, well, I, I stopped praying to God. I said, why? Because he never gives me what I want. I said, what do you want? I asked him for a million dollars, a house, and a new pickup. Uh -huh. I says, what is he going to do, give you a single platter? He says, why not? And we have TV evangelists who say, God wants you to have everything. But he never says you have to work for it. Now, I don't know, I, personally, I don't know of anybody who has that kind of money to, to, to give it away. I don't have that kind of money to buy somebody a house and give them a million bucks. Dude, come on. But I said, why? I said, you think there's a problem with that price? I don't see why. Because whatever you ask, it shall be given you. I said, within reason? Come on. I said, the Lord will supply what you need, not what you want. There is a difference. But yet, we're crucified in Christ. He died for us. And Paul, and Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. And we are in the same boat today. We are fighting a fight against evil. We are fighting a fight against prejudice. We are fighting a fight within ourselves. Because sometimes it's not easy to do what is good. And you see people who do evil all the time and they get away with it. 
And if you sneeze at the wrong time, and they crucify you. You know, it's, it's a, like a no-win situation, but the Lord, but Satan knows who to get to attack you personally. And the fight is not over, but the worst is yet to come. But we need to keep that faith. We have to have faith in Jesus Christ that he forgives. We have to have that faith that he's there with us. But we need to do our part. We need to come to him every day. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. A clean slate. That clean slate happened to me 46 and a half years ago. I've never been happier. I was happy then. I'm just as happy today. In summation, baptism, B, uh, baptism as, as an acronym, boldly come forth, giving all to Christ, accepting Christ's forgiving, cleansing, and healing power, partake of Christ in death and resurrection, total submission to his will, immersion as the example Christ left us, spirit of God filled, member of the kingdom of God. Amen. You know, don't you want to make it to heaven? Don't you want not to, don't you get that desire to live forever? Amen. I met a young lady in her early 20s who says, who wants to live forever? I says, you don't want to live forever? No! She was, a, she, was, she, was a very, she was a beautiful lady. You could tell the way she was dressed. She was a, a lady of the world. And I thought, okay, her life is in the world. Yeah. And many people will be when Christ comes, many will be unaware, be like a thief in the night. I'm just glad we get to go through this just once. Well, right. yeah. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. We I, have to repeat it, amen. No, that's true. But you know, what do we do with ourselves? You have to ask yourself, what do you, what do you want to do? I'm going to tell you a story that happened to me on Baptism Day. This is where stepping down to self came from. My first husband left, there's, there's a long story behind that, and left me with three small children. And I was at home and I, I was very, he was very, he was very, very verbally and physically abusive. The, the physical part was pretty violent. But anyway, one day I was sitting on the sofa, looking at the blank TV screen, and I said, there's got to be something better in life than this. And being a Catholic, I had no clue what that was. All we learned in Catholic school was that Christ died for us, that's it. That's it. And, 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 and the subject. And we, we spent most of our time studying about the saints and, and whatever else. And... Um, and I'm thinking, sitting there, there's going to be a life better than this. And my life has been a life of Hades. I am so tired of this. And then things change. And I moved from Emerald to Hereford. And I met a lady who was a Seventh-day Adventist. Gave me the book, Steps to Christ. I cried through that whole book. I did not know Christ was that way. I thought, ma'am, why did they not teach us in Catholic school or preach about this in church? It hit me. Then she gives me the desire of ages. That hit me too. I thought, man, this is awesome. You know, we have we have Christ. And the day came for me to be baptized. I, I, I read the Bible. I studied. The pastor came to be sure I knew what I was, was talking about. I knew what, what was happening, you know. And uh, he would start a scripture and I would end it. He would say, First John, this as I know, First John two nine, and I, I'd say one nine, I'd say it, and 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 you, I would, you would, they'll say something I will end it for him. Mm -hmm. He looks at his his wife's look at you, says, I think she's ready. He says, I think so too. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you get to know the truth, it grabs you. Yes. And I thought, this is what I've been looking for. This is something better in life. Life may not be easy. My husband and I, we still work. We still have our bills. We still have our children and grandchildren. We have five grandchildren and three great-grandchildren. 
and we enjoy them, we love them, they need help, we help, and we still work because we can't, you know, uh, if we quit, we couldn't afford to help them. Yeah. And we couldn't afford to help the church either. Yeah. And so, Baptism Day came. And I started going up the steps, and I said, oh, no, no, I need to pray. I felt the strong urge to pray. So I knelt down, and I asked the Lord, now, I'm French, and my first husband was Spanish. And it never ceases to amaze me how people who call themselves Christians are so prejudiced. And being French did not help matters at all, even though they never knew a French person, which is like, whatever it is. But, and I knew by the way some of the people were treating me that they would not accept me, I knew this. I didn't say anything, because why? I was focused on Jesus Christ. Amen. And so I knelt down and prayed, and I asked the Lord, call me Downing Thomas, I don't care. I said, I know, I prayed to myself, no, no, no. And I said, I know, but some of these people think of me, and I know I'm not accepted by some of them. I said, but I want to know, do you accept me? Mm -hmm. I said, I need to know this. I said, amen. amen. So I was walk as I was walking out those one, three steps to the platform, I heard the Lord say, you are stepping up to me. Yeah. And I was walking down those three steps to the baptismal water, I heard him say, you are stepping down to some. And I said to myself, wow, Pastor um, Burton, the one that baptized me, and he was a talker. He, he, he grabbed my arm, he was supposed to, he positioned me to be baptized, and he said, you know, when I first transferred here, I did not think that my first job as a pastor is to baptize a new person. And he talked about how he was like visit with me, and he went on and on. I thought, Oh, this is going to take all day to myself, you know. And I'm looking up, and 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 the, and the Hartford Church, their steeple is kind of high like this. I was looking up, and all of a sudden, it's as if the roof just went off on hinges. And I was traveling through space, and I'm looking around. I thought, where am I? And I looked up, and there before me was heaven. There was a thick veil separating us. I could see three chairs, but the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I saw two, two people. The Holy Spirit is invisible. You can't see him. So the third chair, I guess he was there. They didn't say a word. They smiled mm -hmm. and nodded yes. Oh. That hit me. I returned to hear the pastor say, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I was immersed in water. And the lady that brought me to the faith said, Your face had a glow. A new life, a new beginning in the Lord. I know why the Lord, had, there was a twofold reason why I was brought to his presence. Not only to make me, to let, to reassure me that I was accepted of them. That meant more to me than anything. But he knew what was going to happen next. When all was done, hair dry, dry clothes on, you know people like that to sh shake hands, welcome to the family of God. Well, a few minutes later, I was there in the hallway looking at some books to see why I want to take home to read. I cornered my eye, there was a lady looking around, looking around this way, came next to me and she says, I know why you joined the church. If you think we're going to help you, you're mistaken. If I were you, I'd leave right now. Yeah. I looked at him and smiled. I said, oh, okay, whatever. It did not bother me because you know why? Heaven accepted me. That's all that mattered. I was accepted of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
and all of heaven rejoice over one soul Amen. Is, who give their lives to Christ. Amen. And it's, people think that because you're a Christian, your life's supposed to be easy. But what did Christ say? If you follow in my footsteps, you'll suffer persecution. Paul went through the mill, flogged and beaten, left, thrown in dungeons, shipwrecked. I mean, he went through the mill. And he was a hard worker for the Lord. Once the Lord reaped, the, the Lord was the only one who was able to reach him. And the Lord will do all that he can to reach each and every one of us because he does not want, he has no desire that any should perish but come to repentance. It's our sin that's going to keep us out of heaven. And now, what do you want your relationship with Christ to be? How close do you want to be with the Lord? What is the type of relationship you want with Him? Every morning when I get up, I thank the Lord for His protection. I don't know if there was a ruler outside the house. I didn't hear it. But I, I, World War III could be going on outside. I wouldn't hear it. I'm that hard of a sleeper. But my honey, he was ever looking. Did you hear that? I said, you what? I said, you what? I'm cold. I'm cold. What is your relationship with, with Christ? How do you want it to be? Just like a little, like, hi, Lord. Um, everything's fine. Thanks for thinking of me. You go out your way. No. No. Talk to the Lord. As soon as you wake up and your head hits that pillow, you're talking to the Lord. Constantly. Do you realize when you are baptized in Christ, your slate is wiped clean? A new beginning, people. Your past sins are forgiven and forgotten by Christ. You are a new child in Christ. When you come forth from under the water, you arise to a new beginning in life and in Christ Jesus. Amen. Man, it feels good. And I, I, it's hard. I tell you, it's hard. When Satan attacks you, he attacks you at work. He attacks you within the he attacks you within the family. He attacks you wherever you go, even at church. Yes. Mm -hmm. One lady, oh gee, um, my honey will tell you blunt. I I just I don't be around the bush. Um, one Sabbath she comes to church and she picks and she picks and she picks. She has singled me out and picked and picked and picked, criticized my teaching, criticized everything I said and did. And during fellowship meal, as she was sitting across from me, I didn't say I just sat there listening and criticizing. She went on and on and on. I thought to myself, you know, I'd like to enjoy this meal in peace. What, what can I do here? And I looked at her and I said to her, Saint must be on vacation. She said, why is that? because you took over his job. She looked at me, her mouth dropped open. She got up and went to the window and stayed there, staring out the window. People do Satan's work and they don't realize it. They really don't. Either it's their nature, their character, I do not know but they seem to enjoy it, and I don't enjoy it. We don't need to do that at church. Life outside the church is hard enough as it is. When you come to church, enjoy church. Learn from people around you. Learn your Sabbath school lesson. There's something in the lesson you can learn. Do that. I'm gonna close, shall we stand? Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, I personally choose you. Many people do not realize what life in Christ can be like. They miss out on many blessings. They miss out on many miracles in their lives performed by you. I implore you, dear Heavenly Father, to through your Holy Spirit and press upon these people to remain faithful to you to the very end, for great is their reward.
Nothing in this earth is worth us losing our soul salvation over. I ask you, to, I beg of you, to impress upon these people through your Holy Spirit that to be like Paul, who never tired, marching, march forward, <coughs> knowing that what you have done for us, how you have suffered for us, was well worth it, for we are your children. We are your last day remnant. And I beg of you to be with each and every one of us. Have your Holy Spirit dwell in us in such a powerful way that we know it comes from on high. And let us never lose sight of you. Be with us this coming week. God is keep us and protect us. And I know COVID-19 is not done yet. And I ask you to let us use precaution. Let us do our part to be safe. That way you can do your part in protecting us. It, it takes two. To, to, to keep us from having this COVID-19. God is keep us and protect us. And above all, dear Heavenly Father, keep our feet on that path that leads to heaven. In Jesus' holy name, we ask you, we thank you for all things. And we say, Amen. Amen. Thank you for viewing our videos. Hope this was for you and yours. Um, hopefully, please to like and subscribe to our videos and everything we have, every platform we have. Thank you. God bless.